بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته my brothers and sisters in Islam I pray that you are well and I pray that Allah سبحانه وتعالى has mercy on the entire ummah man and woman adult and child Muslim and non-Muslim alike and the animals too that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mercy on us in this trying, trying time, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alleviates this affliction of corona that has affected the whole planet, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us this opportunity, makes this, this shutdown, this lockdown, an opportunity for us to reflect and use to boost ourselves in our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah bless us that we can be productive in this time. So we would like to discuss the topic of istighfar, seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I suppose it starts with one very important thing, right? Firstly, we have to acknowledge that we sin. We have to learn to acknowledge that we are not perfect. We have to learn to acknowledge that we make mistakes. And not only that, we have to learn to acknowledge our mistakes. I'm going to tell you a crazy, crazy story. And you're going to understand just how bad our nafs is. So a man wrote this letter to his sheikh. And he said, the problem is as follows. I came in from the masjid, from Salah, and I put my keys down where I don't normally put my keys down. And when I was going for Aisha, I couldn't find my keys anyway. And I turned the whole house upside down. And I ran a racket in the house. And I got everybody involved. And I was blaming this one and blaming that one and shouting at the wife and shouting at the children. And as I woke, I saw my keys where I now clearly remember putting them but it wasn't where i usually put them but now he had to save face my brothers and sisters in islam he had to save face because now after the buha and the fighting and the blame game he can't acknowledge that oops it was me he can't do it right this is our nafs this is our nafs pure thoroughbred pedigree nafs so what did he do he quietly took his keys and while making a big boo I threw it under the couch and he lifted the couch randomly and he said, who threw my keys under the couch? La ilaha illallah. But his sheikh, Allahu Akbar, and this I take the opportunity to encourage everybody. Find somebody who draws you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is a sheikh of tariqah, who is a sheikh who has got the permission to, to you know, let people pledge allegiance to him for the purpose of spiritual reformation. There are these great pious mashaykh around the world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has never and he will never leave the ummah in the lurch. There will always be these people on earth, right? So let us find them and don't fall into the trap. Don't fall into the trap of yeah, but they're not like the people of the past. They're not like Junaid Baghdadi. They're not like Abdul Qadir Jailani. They're not like Sheikh Mu'anidun Chishti. They're not, not like uh, Sheikh uh, Bahauddin, you know, Naqshbandi and uh, Suhar Wardi. They're not like... Don't, don't fall into that trap. The Mashaykh of our time are Mashaykh for our time. Listen to that statement. The Mashaykh of our time are Mashaykh for our time. Those are Mashaykh for those times. In our time, they are the Junaid Baghdadis of our time. They are the Abdul Qadr Jalanis of our time. And Allah inspires them with what is necessary to guide the people of our time. Right? So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with understanding. Find those people, the good company of, of, of the righteous and the pious. And people who are connected and who practice on the teachings of the deen, practiced on the sharia. Anybody who tells you tariq and sharia are two separate things, 100% sure it's deviation. There's no possibility of tariqah and sharia being separated because the objective of tariqah is to imbibe sharia in its entirety. You cannot separate the two. May Allah give us tawfiq and understanding. So, his sheikh was a legit, 100% righteous, pious sheikh who understood the tricks of the nafs. And what was the medicine? La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. The medicine was, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, go, call your whole family and tell them what you have done. And ask them for their forgiveness. So now I ask you the question, brothers and sisters in Islam. Had he, in the very beginning, acknowledged that I, I put my keys where I can't find them, can everybody please help me find my keys? problem would have been solved and he wouldn't he would have had an opportunity to think and praise and you know build his relationship with his family but now what he's had to do 
is eat the most bitter, foul-tasting pie under the sun, humble pie. 100% halal. Completely approved by every halal authority under the sun. This is the difficulty. So, first lesson that we learn is we need to acknowledge our mistakes. Don't say somebody took my keys. Say I can't find my keys. Say I put my keys where I can't find them and then we will we will be able to you know save a lot of heartache and difficulty <laughs> humbling yourself in front of your wife la ilaha illallah our brothers who can achieve that Allahu akbar Allahu akbar may Allah bless you anyway so let us think about this istighfar my brothers is not just sitting with the being saying astaghfirullah 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 you must truly feel bad in your heart Imam Nawawi rahimahullah ta'ala in Riyadh Salihin has mentioned four conditions for tawbah, four conditions for istighfar. Number one is, you must firstly acknowledge your wrong. Number two, well you wouldn't really start making istighfar if you don't acknowledge your wrong, is it? I mean, isn't it? Number two is, you must feel bad about what you've done. Some people, oh, okay fine, I'm sorry, okay, let's make you happy now. That's not an apology. That doesn't, that's not an apology. Or, yeah, well, I lost my temper because of what you've done. And had you not acted so like this, I wouldn't have lost my temper. But anyway, Marth, you, you, you blamed the person for your apology now. That's essentially what you've done, right? So number one is we must acknowledge the wrong. Number two, we must feel bad, truly, for what we've done. Number three, we must desist from what we have done. Number four is we must make a sincere resolution not to return to that sin again. However... There's a fifth clause here, this little piggy. The, the fifth clause is very simple. That, well, it sounds simple at least, but practice is hard. And this is the, for what we learned from the story. If we've done wrong to other people, our, it's not tawbah, it's not istighfar, if we didn't go and ask them for forgiveness. You have to ask people for forgiveness. However, I'm going to give you a little trick here, that if you fear that going to somebody and saying, listen, I have done X, Y, and Z, please can you forgive me for it, is going to cause fitna, then don't go and tell them what you've done. Just send them a nice gift with a little card and everything, and you know what, I've thought about it, and there's so many things that I have said and done in the past, and uh, I'm just sending to all the special people in my life a humble request to forgive me for anything and everything that I may have done wrong to you or said to you. Like that, you get the gift and you get the card, inshallah, everybody's hearts will melt and they would forgive you. May Allah give us tawfiq. Now, let us speak about a couple of istighfars that we can do. One is, before we go to bed at night, there's a hadith which mentions whoever says, Astaghfirullah alladhi la ilaha illahu alhayyu alqayyum wa atubu ilayh. Three times. Astaghfirullah alladhi la ilaha illahu alhayyu alqayyum wa atubu ilayh. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned that Allah would forgive all his sins even though it may equate to the foam on the ocean, meaning infinite. There's no way that you could possibly calculate that sin, right? There's so much of it. But even if then you ask for forgiveness and you use these words, Astaghfirullah alladhi la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyu al-qayyum wa atubu ilayh, Allah will forgive you. Inshallah, ya Rabbil Alameen, have high hopes in Allah. There's another one. That uh, after every fard salah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's habit was to say, or his sunnah was to say, Astaghfirullah, 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 like that. And the hadith clearly states that he used to extend or, you know, pull his voice. Mad kana yamuddu sawta, with that last one. Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. Right? So let us try that after every salah. But truly, not just Astaghfirullah, 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 just to say it. Say it, truly. That, you know, Ya Allah, I've performed the Salah, I have so many sins, and I pray that the Salah would erase my sins, right? And then, um, there's Sayyidul Istighfar, which is a very beautiful one. Insha'Allah, Rabbil Alameen, we will um, post it on the, the website, Insha'Allah, then we can download this. But the dua is, Allahumma anta rabbi, la ilaha illa anta, khalaqtani wa ana abduka wa ana ala ahdika wa wa'adika ma istata'atu. A'udhu bika min sharri ma sana'atu, abu'u laka bin ni'matika alayya wa abu'u bi dhanbi, faghfir li fa innahu la yaghfiru dhunuba illa ant. Right? Oh Allah, you are my Rabb, there is no God besides you. You have created me, khalaqtani, and I am your servant. 
And I am trying my level best to fulfill my pledge and my promise to you by practicing on Islam, right? That's now in brackets, by practicing on Islam. Um, I acknowledge, I acknowledge every bounty that you've bestowed upon me. And I acknowledge every wrong that I have done. So please forgive me because no one forgives sins besides you. It's called Sayyidul Istighfar, the best form of Istighfar. Let us try and learn this Istighfar and let us recite it daily. And then there's another one that I would like to share with you. Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu anhu used to say this abundantly. Allahumma, Allahumma firli warhamni wa tuba alayya innaka anta tawwab rahim Allah maghfirli warhamni wa tuba alayya innaka anta tawwab rahim Oh Allah forgive me and have mercy on me and accept my tawbah because you are ghafoor rahim And evidently he learned that from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the virtues of istighfar and the importance of istighfar back to what we said in our previous clip that us a thousand istighfar you know uh, sorry uh, a hundred thousand is the far in the next 21 days try and complete that that is a very very powerful amal there's a hadith that says glad tidings to the one who finds abundant is the far in his book of deeds and there's also a hadith that says that whoever seeks abundant forgiveness from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he will make a way out from every difficulty and alleviate every worry and concern may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with understanding and remember also make istighfar when you make istighfar and you seek forgiveness from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala include the ummah in that oh allah on behalf of the ummah at large i ask you to forgive us i hope that's the correct um quotation the verse slips my mind currently but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in that verse that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not punish them while you were around O oh rasulullah so the the benefit of having the rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam alive in his qabr is that allah's punishment doesn't descend on us collectively right like it did on the, um, the nations of the past and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not punish us collectively while we are seeking forgiveness so let us seek forgiveness from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if, as you know, all this, everybody wants to, uh, you know, what's the word, sensationalize the whole situation. It's a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which we acknowledge. But it doesn't mean that now because there's coronavirus, this must be punishment from Allah and what, 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 and everybody's suffering is punishment from Allah because of X, Y, and Z. And must tell you the best. We won't say because of what I'm doing. We'll point out this country and that country and those Muslims and them and they, and it's never I never me let us acknowledge our weakness anyway even if it is a punishment from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah says if we're making istighfar allah will not punish us so that would be alleviated and lifted inshallah we pray that allah grants us tawfiq and understanding whatever i have said that is correct is from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the barakah of his rasul and, us, and, 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 and the mashayikh kiram and my asatida may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of them and whatever I've said that is wrong is from myself and my nafs and shaitan and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his rasul are absolutely and completely you know, absolved of what I have said that is incorrect. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik, subhanakallah, subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanakallah wa bihamdika, ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.